last time that we were talking about stuff, we were talking about how Masa Musa was from the Kingdom of Mali, and Kingdom of Mali was in this area here of West Africa. So we were talking about how he went on a Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca, where he saw the Kaab, uh, where the black stone from heaven fell at. Is it a meteor? No, it's a black stone fell from heaven. Uh, totally not the same thing. In any case, then you also have right here where we kind of stopped that. We said that in Mali, because of this big journey that Masa Musa took and spent a ton of gold, a lot of merchants and scholars then visited Mali uh, from Europe, who then started coming to the area and visiting. You can see in the picture here, in the bottom quarter, uh, this would be a temple in West Africa. So you can kind of see how the temple is set up there and how it's kind of set up. These walls are all mud brick. We talked about mud brick before. Uh, mud brick is when you take water and dirt, you mix it up so you get mud and they need something that binds it together like uh, hay, straw, you know, put that in there, bam, stir it up. They will bind it together and then you can make it into bricks or you can kind of put it on the side here. And over time, the sun will then harden that into place. And you see right there how there's a guy working on the wall. So all these little things, why are they sticking out for? So that way you can get up on the wall and then fix it. Um, because obviously since it's mud brick, it will break down uh, over time. So you got to be able to climb up, you know, be able to fix up and so forth. All right, going to make a new bullet. And we're going to write down Sunny Ali. I'm oh, sorry, new bullet. And we're actually going to write down Empire of Songhai. So new bullet, Empire of Songhai. So eventually the Kingdom of Mali comes to an end. And why does the King of Mali come to an end? Same reason as the Kingdom of Ghana. They lost control of the gold and salt trade. And without the control of the gold and salt trade, the kingdom couldn't get the tax money they needed and then collapsed. So it's the same thing that happened with the King of Ghana. And the Kingdom of Ghana, they're being attacked by the Amirads in the Kingdom of uh, the Empire of Mali. What ends up happening is that the Babers, another group, uh, kind of like kind of like Mongolians again, very similar to the Mongolians, not as good as Conquerors, but very similar to them again. We're kind of being these nomadic group that constantly kept on attacking these guys. They come in, they end up taking over, uh, and then they get overthrown uh, by the Empire of Songhai. Because the Empire of Songhai, the person who overthrows them is Sunny Ali. All right, now we're going to make a one, and we're going to write down Sunny Ali. Now, you may actually be familiar with the name Sunny Ali, you just don't realize it. Um, it's the name is actually from a Disney movie. And the Disney movie that it's from is Aladdin. Uh, that's Aladdin's name that he uses in the movie Aladdin. He goes by Sunny Ali. So when he pretends to be a prince, that's the name he goes by is Sunny Ali. So yeah, you are kind of familiar with that name before. Uh, going to make a two, and we're going to write down overthrew the Babers and expand the Songhai Empire. So two, overthrew the Babers and expand the Songhai Empire. So I'll show you a map here where the kingdom of Mali was and the kingdom of Songhai were. So right now this. And then you can see right here in the map, you can see where Mali was. Uh, Ghana was kind of in this area. Mali's in that area. And then Songhai is going to be in this area. So you can see how it's very much the exact same thing as the Mali Empire. A little bit of a more expansion out here to the east. So you can see they have a bit more territory to the east that they kind of control. And a little bit less to the west, but it's very similar. They control kind of the major cities. All right, so like Timbuktu, Gaio, Jenny, and Kumbesela. So you can see how they control kind of these four major cities here. Same thing as Mali, they control those four major cities. It's just a little bit different through the territory. Um, Islam does kind of spread throughout the empire. And Islam ends up mixing with traditional West African religion. We talked about before about traditional West African religion. So we had talked about it before because when we were talking about the story of Sun of Sundiata. And we talked about it, how you have magical powers in traditional West African religion. So when traditional West African religion mixes with the Islamic religion, just like we mentioned before, that the Sunni Ali is a name from the Aladdin film. Uh, same thing is actually true with the story of Aladdin. The uh, story of Aladdin is, is a mixture of both Islam and traditional West African religion. 
uh, traditional West African religion. Uh, we know it's kind of related to that because in the film, you have Jafar, right? Jafar is the best guy. And since Jafar is a bad guy in the film, his powers are based off a of snake. So you see him with kind of that snake snap. So his powers are very much based off the traditional West African religion and his powers being with that snake, for example. Um, that's what his powers would be based on. That's the animal to be based on. Uh, the genie, for example, in the film, now that's based off of the Islamic religion. So the genie is from the Islam religion and Jafar is from our traditional West African religion. And you guys are a bit more familiar with traditional West African religion than what you probably realize. Uh, voodoo is actually a off branch of traditional West African religion. So when people from West Africa came over to the Americas, they brought along the religion, traditional West African religion. And particularly in the New Orleans area, they then had an offshoot, then the traditional West African religion, then developed into voodoo. So if you're familiar with kind of voodoo, that's very similar to traditional West African religion because it's an offshoot. It's like an off branch of just West African religion. It's so that's where it comes from. So it originates with traditional West African religion. All right. I'll go ahead and make a three. We're going to write down spread Islam throughout empire. So Islam ends up spreading throughout the empire. We talked more about this kind of before, but Islam does kind of spread throughout the Ghana, Mali, Songhai area, uh, Islam does kind of spread throughout there. So we talk a lot about the traditional West African religion, and uh, belief in powers and such. And Islam is kind of, you know, a belief in one God. It's very similar to Judaism and Christianity. There are differences, obviously. But in terms of things being similar, uh, it is kind of, it is similar to those religions because it has a belief in one God. And the Quran is based off the Bible. All right. So um, the Quran is based off the Bible. It just has basically more information added to it. So they basically took the Bible and were like, hey, let's add stuff to it. And then add like other beliefs and so forth into it. All right. Now, eventually, Songhai ends up falling. So make a bullet and we're going to write down Fall of Songhai. So, bullet Fall of Songhai. So, eventually, the Songhai kingdom comes to an end. And how it comes to an end is a couple of reasons. One of the first reasons is weak rulers. So, make a one and write down weak rulers. So one, they had weak rulers that really couldn't control the territory they needed to control. And once again, what's the territory they needed to control? They needed to control those gold and salt mines. Without the control of the gold and salt mines, that leads to a reduction in tax income. Without reduction of tax income, you can't fund troops, can't fund troops, your territory gets taken over. And that's pretty much what ends up happening. So we weak rulers and make a two. And we're going to write down loss of money from salt mines. So we're going to have the money for it. So lots of money. From salt mines. There we go. But I write that down for number two. So lots of money from salt mines. So they originally lost control of the salt mines. They didn't lose control of the gold mines. The gold mines were to the south. And what happened was that the Moroccans from north of the Sahara Desert marched across the Sahara Desert and invaded into the area. And the Moroccans gained control of the salt mines. So without the control of the salt mines and the gold mines, you kind of need control of both to be able to control the territory. While they control of both those mines, they weren't able to control the area. The kingdom ends up kind of collapsing. And to keep money flowing into the area, the West African kingdoms then turn to slavery. And that's where we're going to pick up next time from is the slave trade.